Right, this is a lecture on fluid dynamics and it's on the rate of strain tensor, which is the title of this video. And it's got a few extras which you should know, but they're not worth putting in a video of their own. Right, these extras are the transport theorem, which says that if you differentiate now tau here and here and here, tau is the volume of the mass and rho is the density, so we should know that for these. So the transport theorem is you can differentiate uh, the vo integral over the volume of a function with respect to tau, then this is equal to the integral tau t uh, df over dt plus f divergence of u. And well, this is one of the ones you should know. It's quite useful. It comes in useful in creating the continuity equation which is when you have a m here is denoted as the mass. So if we d integrate the volume, uh, if we integrate the density over the volume, so rho over the volume, then this will give us the mass. And we should note that if we t were to differentiate the mass, uh, then that would equal zero because the mass is just going to be a, a value. So if we do d over dt, dm over dt, that would be zero. But then if we d over dt differentiate this part, we can use the transport theorem here so it, with uh, rho in place of f to give us uh, what this is, just replacing f with rho. And then because it's an integral, it's equaling zero. The only way it can do that with d tau is if this part is equal to zero. So what we've done here is we've created this part unless it equals zero. And this is the, the continuity equation. And another equation you should know, which we've just given the different definition of, is if we differentiate rho times f, then this is rho times df over dt. And we should know that. Right, on to the rate of strain tensor. It's den denoted as Eik, and it's, uh, this is the formula, which is a half duk dxi plus dui dxk and we can use this to calculate the whole table this these are coordinates in a matrix so if we were to have one one that would be the first position and what I've done is we've got an example here just showing you how, how you can use it to work stuff out now this is a 3 by 3 matrix I've stretched it a bit so you might not be able to see too well, but I've used x in the terms of x, y, z, and u is the three components are i, j, and k. I'm not saying what values for i, j, and k, but that's what they are. So what we've done first is we've taken the value 1, 1, because this is our first spot, and so we put that into here. It'd be du1 over dx1 plus du1 over dx1 so that would be 2 du1 over dx1 and we're halving it so we're just left with du1 over dx1 and that's going to work the same in the diagonals if we choose another spot such as here which is 2, 3 then what we're going to do is we're going to have 2, 3 so i is 2 so this is x2 and we know x2 is y um, and we're going to have u2, which you could use as j, but I've just left it as u2, so u2, and we've got dy. And this x is the k, which we said is 3, so 3 across, and so we've got du3 and dz. And of course it's a half as well, and we can't simplify that further. So hopefully you can work out how the rest of the table is made from that. It should make sense, really. Right, now we've got an example using that. We want to find the rate of strain tensor for the following. So we've got u is given by x squared yz uh, in the i component, x y squared z squared in, in the j component, minus x y in the k component. So what we've got here is going to be another 3 by 3 matrix. If you were just given such as uh, like i j and just x y, then you'd only have a 2 by 2 matrix because you've only got two different uh, u components so you don't need to go up to y1 and y2 so these are what we want to find 
in the, in the order. So we've got E11, 12, 13, and so on. And we're going to use this equation here to calculate them. So if we do the first one, E11, then we put that into here, give us a half, U1 of X1 plus U1 over X1. So we want U1 is I, and X1 is just X. Uh, so we differentiate that with respect to X. That'll give us 2XYZ plus 2XYZ, 4XYZ divided by 2 is 2XYZ. Uh, yes, the next one, uh, 2 on. So we use I as 2, put it up here, which would be dy here. Uh, U2 here, which is the j part, uh, over k is 1, so we want x here and i there. So this one's 2, we said. So this one, with respect to x, which gives us y squared z, yes. And this one, which is u1, that one with respect to y, x squared z, and of course half it. And I hope you can follow down how that's done. The last one. Uh, we can carry on here. So if we we can we can check these because we already calculated, but it takes a while. One two. Then we're going to put the values one two in here. So i is one. That'd be dx. This is 2, which is the j. Uh, y squared z, yep. Uh, this one's ui is 1, so we want the i part. And k is 2, so we want the the y of that. So we differentiate the y, and it gives us x squared z, and so on. And so on here. This one cancels out. Uh, 3, so we put 3 in which is the u3, which is the k, with respect to z, because that's our third component of, k, uh, of the x, so x3 is z. So there's no zz, so that goes to zero. And it's the same again over here, because it's always the same on the diagonals. So that's zero again, so that's zero. Then what we do with all these, we put these into the matrix here, and this is our rate of strain tensor. I hope that made sense.